Hello. Uh, good morning. We are going to uh, make a new class now. And I hope you have already done the exercises with the ball and the inclined plane to start. I'm not going to do them so we can take time to make more, more exercise, more asana preparation. And um, I wish you a good, a good practice. And Yogi too wishes you a good practice. So I already did the exercises with the inclined plane and the ball. We don't need them anymore. We are going to put ourselves in our heels. And just uh, feel, feel how the weight is going on both heels. Is it going in the same way or is it's going in one side more than the other side? So just try to feel how this is going in the earth. The points uh, where the skin is in contact with the, your, ma your mat and how the pressure is generated on the skin. If your weight is coming towards the front or if your weight is going towards the back. If both hips are free or if there is one that's turning very slightly towards the, the exterior and the other one towards the interior. If you have a tendency to turn if you don't do anything, means the hips are not the same. Just try to feel this. How your body is aligning. To be in Tadasana, you need to be in the hills. Feel what's going on on your knees. Feel what's going on on your hips. Push your heels on the floor to create a connection between the crown of the head and the hip. and try to feel the movements of the body. Very slow, little movements in the joints. Try to feel your breath. Do you need to use your your muscles of the cage to breathe or it's done by your belly. Do you need to take air in or it just comes in when you release your belly? And feel what's happening on your heels, feel what's happening in your in your feet. Are they active? Or one is active and the other one is doing nothing. Try to feel the connection between the heels and the crown of the head. We are going to work a little bit the balance, so you are going to need a brick. Uh, if you don't have a brick, you can take a, a box, uh, a book or something that's a little a little bit um, strong and uh, like like a brick and you put the brick just in front of you you don't need to have space between your feet you have your usual spa usual space between your heels
and you push yourself towards the left heel for example to raise the, the right foot but it's not a question of uh, raising the, the right foot first the question is how to bring all weight in your left uh, in your left heel and if you if you notice there is a movement horizontally and there is a rotation in the hip and once you have the rotation of in the hip you have to uh, see if your pelvis is aligned or it's collapsing try to create um, the connection between your crown of the head and the heel that's going to maintain all the weight and once you have this connection and the all the leg is active and and tonicity is there you can lift the other one which is free from the weight you put it on the brick and you leave it there you don't put any more weight on the brick you just keep all your weight in your left leg and try to feel if you are turning and if you are collapsing or if you are doing it with your shoulders trying to bring weight with your shoulders you don't need this you need to keep uh, your uh, pelvis horizontal and facing front keep all your weight on your heel and try to to continue to find this connection between the heel and the crown of the head it's like you have uh, a weight on your head and you want to push this weight uh, far away from your heel You don't want the weight to crush your vertebrae. If you want, you can bring your arms um, in ro external rotation, palms up, create space between uh, the fingers and in the palms. And you keep pushing the crown of your head far away from your heel. This is the action. If you want, you can also put a small weight on your head. So this is a preparation to go uh, towards the posture of the tree. And the tree is really connected in, in its, in its uh, roots. And it's because of the connection with the roots that it can go high. Otherwise, it cannot go high. And this is what we, what we mean by pushing the crown of the head towards the, the, the ceiling searching to elongate the, the spinal column all the vertebra bring space between them and bring space harmonically between them and not more in the cervical zone less in the dorsal zone and less in the lumbar zone everywhere So keep pushing the crown of your head away from your heel. And observe, observe your respiration. Observe the small movements in the joints of your legs, in the joints of your, of your arms. Try to let um, the weight of your, of your arms bring your shoulders uh, down lower and lower
and try to keep the posture stable. If you have tendency to fall, you can hold yourself on the wall or uh, in a chair. With time, your ankles uh, become stronger and, and um, balance becomes easier. Let the weight of your arms stretch your neck. Observe what's happening in the body. And then we are just going to put the other leg in the other side and just feel the difference between the two legs. You bring the, you bring the, the arms down and feel what's happening between the two heels in the two ankles, um, in the knees, in the hips two sides of the belly, two sides of your lumbar zone. How is your weight uh, expanding the sensation? How is, how is gravity changing the sensation all the time? To go to the other side I, side, I have to push myself with one heel to get to the other one. So I push myself towards my right heel. It's like I have uh, the mat and I push the mat with my left heel and it brings me towards the right. And it's only a movement in the hips and not somewhere else. Once I, I bring my foot uh, under my axis or once I bring my pelvis in the axis of the foot, all my weight comes in my right heel and I push the right toe on the, on the floor to bring uh, more internal rotation in my hip and more stability in the placement of the hip and the pelvis and then i try to connect my right heel to the crown of the head and i try to feel if i have um, kept my pelvis in level and fr facing front or if my pelvis is doing what it wants I'm not gonna let it do what it wants. I'm gonna keep it, uh, keep it as it should be, facing front and horizontal. Facing front and horizontal. That means that the spine is going to follow and stay uh, vertical and facing front. In fact, once I hit, I feel that the connection between my my heel and the crown of the head is stabilized. I can lift the other leg, put it on the brick. And just keep all the weight on the heel, don't fall in the front. We worked a little bit the external rotation. So what we are going to do is we are going to interlock the fingers and um, put the palms facing down to work the internal rotation. Internal rotation. This is external rotation going towards uh, the exterior of my axis. And this is internal rotation going towards the interior of my axis. So internal rotation, we interlock the fingers 
palm spacing down. And we can do this uh, behind the back. It's uh, more uh, e efficient. And so I let uh, all my weight on my heel. I try to observe what's happening on the body. And also I try to, to make a comparison with the other leg. So just try to be stable, to keep all your weight on your heel, to push your uh, big toe on the floor. Um, pushing the big toe on the floor. It is also a question of transmitting the movement and the information of rotation uh, from the ankle towards your hip, in fact. And this is necessary for the knee to align. So feel what's happening on your knee. Is uh, your, your thigh rotating with your calf or the knee is blocked and there is no possibility of uh, fluid transmission. Try to keep the connection between uh, the heel and the crown of the head and try to feel all the time what's happening in your feet, uh, in your ankle, in the calf muscles, in the, in the knee, in the thigh, in the hip, in the pelvis on your belly, both sides. And try to stabilize this position. Normally this is um, a rest pose that people in many Many places can can rest like this and talk with people and uh, stuff. And this is a this is a balance to find. There is nothing more. If you find the balance, everything everything gets stable with time. If you don't find the balance, you don't find stability. It keeps being a difficult pose. But you have to search the connection between the crown of the head and the heel. This is what is going to bring you towards the axis. Once you feel that your leg is a little bit tired, you can come down. Don't try to stay as long as I do. Sometimes I stay more than I, I should. It is just the fourth session we do. And, uh, and I'm sure in, in a month you didn't um, gain as much stability as I have. So don't worry if it's not as stable as you, and as you see in the video. It is going to get stable. This is what we are doing here. So we are going to try to work a little bit with the chair today and um, and you are going to need the chair so you bring a chair or whatever you have it's all right something for um, not sleeping away on your chair So what we are going to do is preparation to, towards Trikonasana, the triangle pose. At first we are just going to bring the foot on the chair. We leave the heel out of the chair. So if I show you where we put it. 
the chair is right here. There is a little... A little bone that comes out. This is the small... Uh, the small toe. This is a big toe. And this is where we put the chair. The heel is in the outside and this bone is in the inside. So I come in a balance in my leg and I put my foot on the chair. And being here, I start pushing myself towards the front with my back heel and I start pushing myself towards the back with my front heel that pushes the chair towards the front and I find the balance with, between these two forces there, there's two horizontal forces and I try to continue to push myself towards the front I feel that the back of my thigh is active It's propulsion of with with your with your leg. It's every step we we take. This is how we do. <clears throat> if I want to bring myself towards the front, so I can go towards Yogi, for example. I am. Uh, in fact, I am pushing myself towards the front, or I am pushing the earth towards the back so I can come in front I am not just bringing my sun center of the mass uh, in front and letting myself fall every every time I make a step I am pushing myself towards the front You can bend a little bit your back knee if you want to keep your pelvis in a level horizontally, perfectly horizontal. And you keep pushing yourself towards the front with your back heel. It's necessary to push the mat towards the back. And you stay there. You don't have to come back back and front back and front if you want to feel what's happening in the movement of your hips uh, you can try to do it in the beginning and uh, and after you stabilize the forces you um, you balance both forces and you you stay there and to go to trikonasana we need to work the external rotation. So if I push the chair towards the wall behind me with my foot, I will turn in my heel on the floor and I keep pushing the chair towards the back. And what I'm going to need to do here is, as I am pushing the chair towards the back, I am going to, to need to bring my pelvis in an horizontal plane. So here I see that my pelvis is not facing front and I'm not going to try to turn my shoulders to face front because I'm going to be in a torsion. I'm just going to stay with my pelvis. You don't need to, to turn for the moment as much as I push my knee and the chair towards the, the wall, this is going to make me turn more and bring my pelvis a little bit more towards the front. And it's already something uh, like this that we do in the triangle pose. It's because I'm pushing the chair that I'm turning. 
always. If I release, I will be here. But if I push, this, this force is going to bring me here. And this is necessary to, to release all muscles that connect your leg to your pelvis. All the external rotators are working. All the internal rotators are uh, stretching. Not every one of them, but some of them. If I want, I can push also my knee towards the back with my arm and keep wanting to keep the pelvis in level and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my my chair towards uh, towards the front so I can extend my knee and I'm going to stay in the same position in the relation with my knee. I'm not going to change the angle between my body and my thigh. And I only try to um, extend my knee. And I keep it flexed, it's not there. Uh, the question is not to, to extend my knee and I'm here. The question is to keep the action active, to keep the action of pushing the knee, pushing the knee pushing the chair um, towards the front so I can um, unfold really slowly my knee. When I, I, fall, I fall, unfold the knee, I, I unfold the knee, this is what I do. I'm not trying to uh, push as much as I can and come here and then do nothing. I am just just unfolding my knee. With my hand I keep uh, pushing a little bit my knee towards the back. So I can keep the alignment between the ankle, the hip and the knee. And I keep pushing the chair towards the front. Uh, pay attention to your uh, knee on the oh, oh, in the leg on the floor. You don't block your knee. Push your big toe on the floor and keep all the weight on the heel. The action of the hand is not necessary. You can also try to uh, lengthen all the side, uh, the front side. And the other hand, you can also put it in the back. And like that, you go towards the triangle without having all your weight in your uh, front leg. You have more weight in the other leg, but the other leg is already capable of keeping uh, this weight in this geometry. Uh, in the triangle, we, uh, we are... Uh, a lot more like that. If you turn your, your screen, if you turn your screen, we are not like this. We go like this without turning the pelvis. And then we are going to come in front by by pushing the, the chair towards the front. I will change the side of the chair. Okay. Keep um, both weight on your heels and feel what's happening between the two sides. Feel the difference between the two hips, feel the difference between the two legs but uh, also try to feel the difference um, in the two nostrils for example and the two eyes 
two sides of your um, of your mandibula. Well, you know, I don't have a great accent, but it's all right. Uh, it's uh, it's clear enough, I think. So you come towards the front. In the beginning, uh, we are just going to put the foot on the chair and push ourselves towards the chair, push the chair towards the front. So it's this, this first uh, dynamics. I am maybe going to do it like this, so you can see uh, also the other So I come in a, in a balance and then I put the leg right in front of me. I don't try to put it in the exterior, not in the interior. And I keep uh, pushing the chair towards the front and pushing the mat towards the back. But the chair here is not going to stay, so I will come here. If you have stayed there, Till the beginning, we are going to stay as much as long as, uh, as we stayed the other side. I keep pushing the mat towards the back with my heel. Try to feel what's happening in your knee. Are you blocking your knee or it's, it is active and pushing the, the mat towards the back? And you push yourself towards the back always with your front leg also. Keep both actions and balance them. Try to create the connection between your heel in the back and, and the crown of your head. Bring extension in the hip. It's a contraction in the back of the thigh that will bring extension in the hip. And you can push both big toes, toes on the floor or on the chair. Observe your respiration, observe inhale, observe exhale. Are there any pauses in between or it's very fast? Normally, respiration shouldn't be influenced by this posture. It is obviously going to be a, a little bit influenced in terms of utilization of left and right side of your lungs. But otherwise, this is not going to create a fast respiration or fast heartbeat. You see. Keep both actions of pushing. It's like there is an archer here that puts his hand here and wants to uh, bring extension in the arc. And then we are going to push the chair towards the back, come here and uh, try to stay aligned, an alignment between the two heels and an alignment between the ankle, the, hi the, uh, the, ankle, the, the knee and the hip. Push your chair bit, uh, towards the, the back. Pay attention to your knee in the other leg. Don't block your knee. And you also can push uh, your knee a little bit towards the back. Keep your pelvis in level horizontally.
Just try to feel what's happening in your hip with these actions of pushing the chair towards the back at first and then with pushing the chair uh, far away from me so I can unfold my knee. And unfolding your knee, you just have to keep this action of pushing the chair towards the wall or away from you. The other hand can come in the back and in the inside of your hip, the other hand can also try to give you length in the, in the side you're stretching. And I keep oh, keep pushing, pushing my my heel towards the wall to push my chair towards the wall and to, up, to unfold slowly um, my knee. And you can also just let your hand on your on your shin. Don't collapse. Keep both sides long. You can also control both sides are, are long by putting your hands between the rib cage and the pelvis. And then we come in the middle. You can remove the chair. And take a break. We are just going to test a little bit of Trikonasana without the chair. So we come with the feet apart, one meter at least. We are going to rotate the fingers towards the exterior, um, 90 degree, degrees, and we lift the heel and we put it a little bit more towards the front. So here it's like in the first gesture when we push the, the, the chair away. And then we are going to push the chair away to unfold the knee. And there's nothing changing in my back. I stay long both sides. So you can just keep your, uh, your hand on your shin bone or if you find enough rotation in the hip and enough flexion, you can push also um, the brick on the wall, on, uh, on the floor and uh, bring some more length in the upper body. But keep, keep all the weight on your heel, in the front and in the back. Don't bring more, so much weight in your hand. Keep your pelvis facing front. Don't let your pelvis rotate. You can look in your hand or maybe uh, just look in front of you, it's all right. But um, just test if you can look in your hand and you don't have pain on your neck. If you you have pain in your neck, you just uh, look in front of you. 
Don't block uh, your your elbows. And then to come in front, my my leg in the back is going to push my knee towards the front and flex it. And then we come in the front and we uh, we just try to feel the differences between the two sides. And also every time you search for differences, search everywhere in the body and not only uh, where we work. So you can learn little by little to to see which part is connected with uh, another and which action is connected with uh, which part. So we, tar we turn the fingers, the toes, 90 degrees towards the, the, the exterior, towards the left in this in this case. We lift the heel and we put it a little bit towards the front. And we are already in, in a posture that we, we work external rotation. And here observe what's happening in your feet, for example. Is your weight in your heels? Are you not putting the weight in the inside of your uh, of your feet? We don't want to create flat feet in this posture. We want to put pressure in the big toe to lift the ankle, the interior of the ankle, a little bit. Keep the pelvis uh, facing front. And then we are going to push the mat away from from the center. Center. Away from the center. <laughs> so we unfold the knee slowly by pushing the mat away from me, away from the center. Keeping the weight on the heel. And I try to just unfold the knee, staying all the time in my heel. Pay attention to your back knee. Don't block it. Stay on your heels. Push the big toe on the floor. Even if it's a very small action, it's enough to send a message. You can take the brick and put the brick on the floor, or just keep the, your hand on your hip or your, on your shin bone, on your hip. It's when you cannot come down so easily on your shin bone, it's already um, quite an external rotation for your hip or in the brick, as, as you wish. Don't block your elbow. Keep the shoulder down. Don't fall on your shoulder. Keep weight on the heels. Try to feel what's happening in the body. And keep unfolding the knee really slowly your other hand you can come uh, up with your hand it's not uh, like i want to bring all myself towards the ceiling but it's just the hand that is being supported by the other hand I can watch my hand or maybe I can watch in front. Don't block any of your elbows. Let the posture pose you.
to come in front, you just need to push yourself towards your front knee. You let it flex and you come in front. Um, stay with your weight on your heels, feel the differences between the two sides. What's the differences in the lungs, two sides of the neck, two sides um, of your uh, of your bones in the in the face also, in the cheeks, in the eyes, in the both sides of your of your nose, in the nostrils. We are going to take a break again and maybe if you have a rope you, you can take a rope also. And find a, a distance, a distance, a length that can be maybe the distance between the space in your uh, in your head between the big toe the big uh, ah the thumb i found it the thumb and the, the second finger and your elbow or maybe uh, the distance between your two armpits and you uh, you can put this around the elbows and take a break push into the brick and what we are going to do we are going to be on the heels bring a triple flexion ankles knees and hips stay with all the weight on the heels and try to bring the brick towards the ceiling in a preparation towards the chair utkatasana Don't forget the flexion in the hips. Observe your respiration. Is your perineum responding to your uh, exhale and to your inhale? Keep pushing the brick like you want to, to bring your hands really close, but the brick is blocking you. Keep your elbows close to each other. Keep all your weight on your heels. And don't maintain your toes. Don't let them uh, contract the front of your shin bone. You just put your, your toes on the floor like, uh, like a cat's pose. You just keep all the weight on your heels. Feel the tonicity in the legs. Feel if you have any differences in the left and in the right side. And try to bring the brick uh, towards the ceiling. Search for the connection between the heels and the crown of the head also. Stay, you find the balance between activity in the front and in the back side of, of your legs. Don't let the ribcage come towards the front with your arms.
and then we come straight triple extension you can leave uh, the brick and the rope try to feel what's happening in both sides and we are going to come on the knees so on the knees as, as we have talked before as much as possible on the back of the heels we put our pelvic bones and muscles of the of, of the thighs and of the as much as possible in the back of the heels to stabilize the, the pelvis and what we're going to do is we're going to come on the heels on the knees without changing uh, the place of the pelvis pelvis stay the same it's only an extension in the hips Once we are on the knees, we are going to bring more weight in one knee. Let a little bit of time for the weight to bring a small internal rotation in the, in the hip. And once all my weight is in my, in my knee on the floor, I will bring my leg towards um, the the exterior towards the right for this case keep my pelvis in level keep my uh, my heel on the floor and the big toe pushing the floor And on, already here, I can push a little bit myself towards, toward, push the knee towards the back to bring a little bit of extension here. And the other arm can come up. I am not trying to bring my hand towards my foot. I'm trying to find here flexion and to keep the pelvis facing front. And we are in Parigasana, but it's really similar with the gestures of Trikonasana. And we try to find length in both sides. And you stay there you do, you don't collapse any any side you stay there actively if you want you can look in your head but you shouldn't have any any pain in your neck Feel what's happening in your respiration. And 
and we are going to come in the center to feel what's happening in both sides you sit as much as possible in the back of your ankles in the back of your heels and this is a very good occasion to extend the ankles if you have problems with the ankle extension to come to the other side we need to go up without changing the pelvis It's a hip extension only. I bring more weight in the knee that's gonna stay on the floor and then I, I bring the other leg towards the exterior. Right here, I am in internal rotation everywhere. And I come in external rotation by going away with my heel. Maybe you don't see because it's too black. But normally, if I want to uh, do really well, I have to bring the heel in the same line as the knee. But it's going to take time to bring the pelvis facing front. If I cannot do it in the beginning, I can bring my heel a little bit uh, more towards the front to keep the pelvis facing uh, front and with time you see we are going to be able to bring the pelvis towards the front don't block your knee in the in the, in the front you can push your knee towards the back to create a, a little bit more of external rotation External rotation in, in the hip, basically. So it's this action that is going to keep me uh, working the external rotation in my in hip. Very important for pregnant people, for example. Because it's going to release muscles between the hip and the pelvis. And also one part of the perineum. In, in each side I'm working, I feel differences in the perineum. So I push my knee away from me and I can, can bring my hand towards the front and towards uh, the ceiling. And I try to bring length in the side, which is going to facilitate uh, respiration because I bring length in all these zone of the belly uh, which is uh, very compressed sometimes it's it's like when we eat a lot and we cannot breathe it's one of the reasons we breathe uh, with di with difficulties it's it's this thing it's uh, maybe not having enough movement in the bowels having a baby this can create pressure and we need this length in all the, all the abdominal zone to create more space and to be able to breathe easily so i push i push my heel towards the front and i try to create space everywhere push my heel towards the front to unfold my knee like I was in the chair and like I was in Trikonasana. This is the same, the same thing. It's only a gravity that changes the dynamics a little bit. Because of the amount, not because of the quality of the forces. And I'm going maybe to look at my hand also. or behind my shoulder try 
try to observe the respiration. And then we are going to come in the front, that you take a break. We are going to put the knees really close to each other. Come on the knees, make space by trying to bring the fingers towards uh, the heels, towards the, the exterior, both sides. But the fingers try to stay together. So I'm going to put the brick be be, uh, in in between my ankles and I'm going to sit on the brick. What I can do also is to try to uh, rotate internally the shin bone by grabbing my muscles and bringing the muscles towards the exterior. Out of the way of, uh, of the thighs. And I sit here and this, uh, only the fact in sitting like this brings another kind of uh, of extension in the pelvic uh, pelvic muscles. I will interlock the fingers and just put them really deep inside my thighs. And this posture is very, very stable. And you can use it to, to meditate or to, to sit in everyday life. It's, uh, it brings stability in the back. It, and, and like this, you don't have the contractions in the back muscles, but also helps you uh, stretch some of the pelvic muscles. So th this is it for today. Uh, you can just sit like this uh, for 10 or 10 minutes to feel what's happening, to feel uh, what the, the work that we have done has done to your body. And, um, and I will see you soon in the next session next week. Try to repeat. Mm. Try to repeat every day these videos. So if you have time, you can you can do uh, the videos as they are. If you don't have time, you can also do small parts of the videos. It's not a problem at all, at all. Uh, it's uh, something that can be done by uh, little by little. I would suggest you to do the exercises with the ball and the client in the, in the morning and then the rest you find some time. If you don't have no time at all, uh, you do the video twice. <laughs> and uh, see, you, see you soon. Have fun. Pay attention to your sensations. Don't go too far. And uh, see you soon.